In our previous lessons, we talked about juridical capacity and capacity to act. Juridical capacity, which is the fitness to be the subject of legal relations, is inherent in every natural person and is lost only through death. We know that from our previous lessons that when I die, my children will inherit from me. They have juridical capacity or the ability to be on the receiving end of legal relations. In our previous lessons, we compared this situation to our dog Chucky. Chucky is a dog we rescued about four years ago. He helps us when we rescue other dogs because he teaches them how to walk with a human on a leash. That grass, soil, and gravel are okay places for pooping and how to behave inside a moving vehicle. Now on the day I die, I want Chucky to receive Konware some property in Quezon City for him to know that I still care for him long after I am gone. However, Chucky cannot receive this property not because he cannot read or write. But because he is a dog, he is not a person within the meaning of the civil code. He has no civil personality. Sad but true. This is the lesson I want to share with you tonight. Let's look at civil personality, when it begins and what its effects are. I want to share with you some of the reasons behind the law on civil personality and its reckoning point. All of this and more coming right up. This episode is brought to you by Decada, 10 life lessons from 10 years in law school. Sa akdang ito, ako na ang nagkamali na dapa, lumuha at nasaktan para ikaw kapatid ay makatapos sa loob ng apat o anim na taon. Think of it as a game guide, a cheat sheet that you can use throughout your law school journey. By purchasing this ebook, you are sowing the seeds of free legal aid for those who fall within the gaps of the law. With your help, we can bring the law to the people and more people to the law. Grab your copy through the link in the description down below. Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Article 40 of the Civil Code teaches us that birth determines personality, but the conceived child shall be considered born for all purposes that are favorable to it. Provided it be born later with the conditions specified in the following article. The first line of the codal provision tells us that birth determines personality. But when can we say that a fetus is born? Professor Ruben Balane, the man, the myth, the legend, teaches us that birth is the complete separation of the fetus from the mother's womb. Ibig sabihin kapatid kapag nailawal, naiire na ng nanay ang kanyang sanggol, ay mayroon na ba itong personality? The answer kapatid is no. The separation of the mother and the child has to be complete. This means that the umbilical cord has to be cut. When this is cut kapatid, dito at dito pa lang natin masasabing completely separated na ang mother at child. This is what the law means by the word birth. Now, let's look at the next word or concept of personality. Personality, according to Dean Albano, is not the same as capacity. Personality is the aptitude or natural ability to be the subject of rights and obligations. On the other hand, capacity or more specifically, full civil capacity is the combination of juridical capacity and capacity to act. A newborn infant has personality because he or she has juridical capacity. Mula sa unang linya ng Article 40, kapatid, we now know that a person's capacity and by extension, juridical capacity starts from the moment of birth. That is the complete separation of the child from the mother's womb. That is the general rule. Now, by way of exception, Article 40 of the Civil Code also teaches us that the conceived child shall be considered born for all purposes that are favorable to it, provided it be born later with the conditions specified in the following article. This means, kapatid, that by way of exception, a conceived child, an unborn child, o ang batang nasa sa pupunan pa lang ng kanyang ina, ay maaaring ituring ng ating batas na isinilang na shall be considered born. Kailan kaya ito? Kailan kaya itinuturing ng batas na isinilang na ang isang sanggol na pinaglilihi pa lamang ng kanyang ina? 
Before we discuss how or when this happens, it's useful, kapatid, that we first discuss the kinds of personality as defined by Justice Paras. He says that there are two kinds of personality, presumptive personality and actual personality. Presumptive personality pertains to the unborn child or the naschiturus. He or she enjoys a presumptive or provisional personality. He or she is considered born even when there is no complete separation of the child from his or her mother's womb. He or she is considered born even when there is no cutting of the umbilical cord. Presumptive personality will apply for all purposes that are beneficial to the unborn child or the naschitorus. Classic na halimbawa dito ay ang kaso ni De Jesus versus Cesar Siquia. Cesar was the son of a very rich family and he frequented a barber shop owned by his brother-in-law. In this barber shop, there was an unmarried young woman who worked as a cashier. Antonia De Jesus and Cesar Siquia began dating. From their dating came a child just before Cesar Siquia left for his business trips to China and Japan. He wrote a letter to a priest stating that the child expected to be born in June is his and that he wants him to be named Cesar Siquia Jr. The issue in this case was whether or not the unborn child can be recognized and supported. The Supreme Court, speaking through Justice Street, ruled that upon this point, we have no hesitancy in holding that the acknowledgement thus shown is sufficient. It is a universal rule of jurisprudence that a child upon being conceived becomes a bearer of legal rights and capable of being dealt with as a living person. The fact that it is yet unborn is no impediment to the acquisition of rights. The problem here presented of the recognition of unborn child is really not different from that presented in the ordinary case of the recognition of a child already born and bearing a specific name. What the Supreme Court is trying to teach us in this case is this. The conceived but unborn child is perfectly capable of bearing legal rights. The unborn child is entitled to recognition and support. Now, Article 40 of the Civil Code tells us that provisional capacity requires that the child be born under the conditions set forth in the following provision. Article 41 of the Civil Code provides that for civil purposes, the fetus is considered born if it is alive at the time it is completely delivered from the mother's womb. However, if the child had an intrauterine life of less than 7 months. It is not deemed born if it dies within 24 hours after its complete delivery from the maternal womb. Article 41, kapatid, should be considered in its ordinary sense. Sabi sa first line for civil purposes, the fetus is considered born if it is alive at a time it is completely delivered from the mother's womb. Walang mahirap unawain dito, kapatid, kung ang isang sanggol ay dinala sa tiyan ng nanay niya nang siyam na buwan at buhay siya, meaning nag-iiyak siya dyan pagkatapos siyang punasan at paluin ng doktor. Pagkatapos siyang iniluwal ng kanyang nanay, then it is considered born. His or her presumptive personality is transformed into actual personality. Halimbawa, kapatid, lampas siya sa 9 months. Kunwari, ang gestational age ng bata ay 40 weeks. Kunwari lang, ha? Iniluwal siya ng nanay niya at buhay siya nung nilabas siya. Is the child considered born for all civil purposes? The answer, kapatid, is yes. Pasok na pasok siya sa Article 41 because the law does not specify a maximum time inside the mother's womb. Again, his or her presumptive personality is transformed into actual personality. How about this one, kapatid? Kunwari daw ay nagkaroon ng artificial fertilization ang mga magulang. They went to a clinic where the sperm cells of the father and the egg cell of the mother were combined. However, the couple was unable to find a surrogate mother. The clinic offered that they grow the baby through a chamber filled with amniotic fluids. Nine months later, the baby was handed over to the parents. Is this child considered born for all civil purposes? 
The answer, kapatid, is no. Article 41 is very clear. The law requires that the fetus is alive at a time it is completely delivered from the mother's womb. Where there is no womb to speak of, just a glass chamber or vessel, then there is no delivery to speak of. I hope this is clear, kapatid. Dito at nandito nang gagaling ang mga ethical at legal dilemas ng cloning. We have talked about the general rule. Let's talk about the exception. If the fetus had an intrauterine life of less than 7 months, it is not deemed born if it dies within 24 hours after its complete delivery from the maternal womb. Sounds complicated, kapatid, pero hindi yan mahirap unawain. Kalma ka lang dyan. The second part of Article 41 tells us that if a child had an intrauterine life, meaning ang time spent, sa loob ng sinapupunan ng nanay of less than 7 months, it is not deemed born if it dies within 24 hours after its complete delivery from the maternal womb. Three concepts here that I wish to draw your attention to. Let's start with 7 months. Now, kapatid, medical science, as much as it has advanced in our lifetimes, is actually incapable of pinpointing the exact moment of conception. What we have right now are intelligent estimates based on the last menstrual cycle, based on the size and development of the fetus, and based on the growth of the fetus. From these clues, doctors are able to give us a good estimate of the age of the fetus. When a fetus is expelled from the mother's womb at 7 months, a fetus is usually complete in features. For premature deliveries, the survival rate of a child born on the 7th month of pregnancy is greater than that born at 8 months. This survival rate increases yet again at 9 months old. Next concept, 24 hours. If the child has a gestational age or intrauterine life of less than 7 months, then the law imposes an additional requirement. It is only considered born for all civil purposes if it survives for at least 24 hours. Don't worry kapatid kung malabo pa yan ngayon. Mamaya mas mabubuo natin ang pag-unawa mo sa Article 41. Last concept. Complete delivery from the maternal womb. This means, kapatid, as I've mentioned earlier, the complete separation of the child from mother. This includes the cutting of the umbilical cord. Let's look at some examples, kapatid, para mabuo at makompleto natin ang understanding natin ng Articles 40 at 41. If a child was carried to term, meaning he or she was carried by the mother for up to 9 months, the child exited the womb and was completely separated from the mother. But the child is still born. Meaning, he or she was gray and lifeless, walang buhay at the moment of birth. Is the child born? Did his or her presumptive capacity transform to actual capacity? The answer, kapatid, is no. Article 41 requires that a child has to be born alive as a general rule. If a child was carried for up to 7 months, the child exited the womb and was completely separated from his or her mother. At the time of his separation, he was alive and crying angrily at the world. Is the child considered born for all civil purposes? The answer, kapatid, is yes. There is no requirement that he remain alive for 24 hours because he had an intrauterine life of 7 months. Next, if a child was carried for a period of six and a half months, meaning less than seven months, the child exited the womb barely breathing at 10 a.m. in the morning. He was immediately placed on life support. Despite timely medical intervention, he stopped breathing at 10 p.m. in the evening of the same day. Is the child born? The answer, kapatid, is no. The second line of Article 41 is applicable. He is not considered born because while he was completely separated from the womb, he did not survive, sadly, for a period of 24 hours. Next, the child was carried for six and a half months. The child exited the womb and doctors were extremely optimistic of his chances of survival. He was born at 10 a.m. in the morning and was immediately placed on life support. However, he died two days later. Is the child considered born for all civil purposes? Did his presumptive personality mature into actual personality? 
The answer, kapatid, is yes. Article 41 of the Civil Code tells us that a child who has had an intrauterine life of less than six months only has to survive 24 hours in order that he be considered born. This child, in our example, survived for up to 48 hours. Next example, the child was carried to full term. The child exited the womb completely, although the mother and the child both tested positive for COVID-19. The child was immediately placed in the neonatal intensive care unit of the hospital, and the mother was also placed in the COVID ward. However, three days later, the child died. Is the child considered born for all civil purposes? Did his presumptive personality mature into actual personality? The answer, kapatid, is yes. We only apply the 24-hour survival rule when the intrauterine life of the child is less than 7 months. Sa ating huling halimbawa, 9 months naman siya sa sinapupunan ng nanay niya. Buhay siya noong siya ay isinilang pero pumanaw daw dahil sa pandemya. Let's look at another example. In my will, I have designated my wife and my child as my compulsory heirs. Dagdag natin dito si Chucky, who technically cannot be a devisee but for whom a small device of real property is dedicated. Now, if I die next week, my wife and my child will be my heirs. However, if my wife and I are able to conceive again, then our unborn child has to be one of my heirs. If I die before our second child is born, then our child will become an heir. He or she has presumptive personality. He or she will get his or her share when the requisites under Article 41 of the Civil Code are fulfilled. Another effect of Article 41 is what we see when a child is born. If the woman is six months pregnant and comes into a hospital complaining of contractions, her husband is not going to be whisked away by the nurses in order to fill in a birth certificate. Now, if the pregnant woman is seven months pregnant, the husband or the boyfriend is taken away by the nurses to write into a form for the registration of a live birth. Anascitorus or a conceived but unborn child can be the subject of donations or essentially anything that is favorable to him or her. Pwedeng bigyan ng lola ang kanyang magiging apo ng 250,000 pesos. Ang tatanggap ay ang kanyang mga magulang. Kung may conditions na attached ang donation, gaya ng bibigyan siya ng lupa at bahay, pero ang apo rin mismo ang magpapalayas sa mga squatter o magbabayad sa pagkakasanla ng bahay at lupa ay pwedeng tanggihan ang donation. Remember, for all purposes, favorable for it. In both cases, the child has to be born alive. If the child had an intrauterine life of less than 7 months, then the law requires that he or she must survive for at least 24 hours. To summarize tonight's lesson, number one, birth determines personality. From conception before birth, we have presumptive or provisional personality. When the child is born alive, then that ripens into actual personality. It is the same personality we carry all the way until the day we die. Number two, if the fetus had an intrauterine life of less than seven months, the child has to be born alive and survive for 24 hours in order that the presumptive personality will ripen into actual personality. 3. A conceived child is perfectly capable of being the subject of legal relations for all intents and purposes that are favorable to it. The only requirement is that he or she be born later under the conditions set forth in Article 41. I hope, kapatid, that you have learned something new today. If you have questions, please ask away in our comment section below. Two announcements before we end. Una, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng bumati sa akin sa aking karawan. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all your love, your prayers, and your support. If you had told me last summer that I'll be celebrating my birthday this year, I would not have believed you. By God's grace, here we are. Second, I would like to recognize the top performers of the Law School Bootcamp Batch 3 Law Student Edition. The following have distinguished themselves during seven grueling days with me. Number one, Joanna Marie Mahait, 66.71. Two, Jill Sahidin, 
65.71. 3. Emmy Molina, 65.28. If you are interested in attending future editions of the Law School Bootcamp, please send me a PM on Facebook. If you would like us to continue with our series on persons, please let me know by typing yes in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Karma and I will see you next Friday.